Hello, Perfect Death here, and I'm going to do a, another attempt to record this video. I, a while ago, we started doing in Ragnarok Online Mobile some um, different group compositions for Komodo Museum third floor legend difficulty. And in this composition, we are running two Taekwons, which relatively new class that came out, and a Soul Linker. And one of the things that we're going to do pretty early on is figure out a different order. Normally, we run and try to take out Nuka right away. But in this composition, because um, the Taekwons can switch to Ghost Element and the Soul Linker deals a lot of Ghost Element damage, we're going to take out Kamora because she has a shield that makes her immune to all but Ghost Element damage for quite a while. When it goes down, then you can damage her, but you know it makes her pretty annoying to deal with, and she's constantly causing these purple bombs to go off. So you won't really get to see them do too much, except for just Kamora's health bar absolutely melt away here. But my job is to take Pakarani and pull her away so she doesn't debuff people. And... You know, for the most part, I just find that all I have to do is just taunt her once and stand around. Um, eventually, I do worry about Joel. We're not really worried too much about Meteor Bait. I do have Meteor Bait on me, so Kamura will try to shoot Meteors at me, but I'm way on the opposite end of the map from her. And so then after Kamura goes down, then we shift over to Pokorani. She has a shield that makes her immune to melee damage. But the Taekwons, if they get a rune, that rune allows them to bypass shields. And so they are able to um, DPS Pokorani pretty quick. Um, one of the Taekwons has the debuff from doing the last hit on Kamora. Ideally, that would have been the Soul Linker, but... In this case, it was um, one of the Taekwons. Um, the other DA is just trying to keep Nuka away because he can just do his group disarm and that stops the DPS from being able to do DPS. And occasionally he just runs around and mean, you know hits people with his Azura Strike. So most of our deaths, I think, are going to come from Nuka still as he just runs around and hammers everybody and right around here we see I switch over and I just start trying to pull Nuka away. Pakarani went after somebody else so I decided whatever I'll switch and I'll just tank Nuka. Um, the Nuka fight is a bit trickier with the Taekwons because they have to get closer and his group disarm um, hits everybody a lot easier. Um, it's a bit easier I think for the Rune Masters to avoid that but yeah you can see he just ran off to go Zero Strike. Um, uh, one of our Taekwons there. Uh, not much you can do about that. The Some of the other runs we've been doing, um, we've been trying to use with our DAs to have um, Devotion. And that's a skill where we link to one of the Taekwons and any damage they receive, we receive instead. And that's really useful for the Taekwons because they... Um, they don't get and anti-fatal doesn't work for them and neither does faith prey so they die if they get hit when their health gets too low and at a certain point they're just going to get you know one shot by some of these bosses just from a, a one or two auto attacks so um we weren't really devoting that skill to these type ones very much which possibly is why we were having so many casualties here um, in some of my newer runs, we try to coordinate that a little bit better so that the Taekwons don't die as often. Um, in a future update that's going to be different, Taekwons will be able to have anti-fatal foods and Faith Prey protect them. Um, but you can see we took out Joel second, but that does um, still mean we have to figure out how to kill Nuka. The main thing is we're going to just try to spam our taunts on him so he can't get his mask skills through. And then the Taekwons have to try and count the disarm. But sometimes it's... Like, there was a couple of times where it's... He did his group disarm, Taekwons run in, and then another disarm goes off. And, like, right there, 
You see, he tried to run away from it, but that happened really fast. That was a very fast disarm. And then he just deserves strike me. So, and then boom, there's another disarm. So that was quite a wait between the two disarms. Um, now we are on voice chat and at a certain point I start counting, like declaring when the disarm happens so that they can run in. So I just said, oh, disarm, and then they run in. Uh, but then you see he disarmed him anyway. So it's like, what is going on with this guy? So in some of our other runs, we've actually done Nuka second or third instead of last, just because he is so annoying because of that Azura strike. You can see we are now at zero res. Um, and I think at some points, I know we've got some of our buffs going to them as DAs, um, just try to keep them alive a little longer. But for the most part, I'm just we're just spamming taunt on this guy, and just trying to see if we can muscle it. But that was a five-minute run, which is probably one of the fastest runs that we've done so far on our compositions. And you don't really get to see it too much. But if I go over here, we can see that. They do fight Kimura initially next to Joel over here on the top right corner. Um, Joel, Nuka, and Kimura, they're all clumped together. Um, we were originally thinking about doing that because the Tyke ones have splash damage on their attacks. But being so close to Nuka doesn't mean you will occasionally see the DPS on Kimura just stop. And that's probably because of a disarm. So... In some of our other runs that we've done, we do, we have the Nuka tank pull Nuka away. We have the Pokerani tank pull Pokerani away. And then the Taekwon just tries to take out Pokerani or Kimura all on her own. Um, it is a bit tricky because they don't have the anti-fatal or anything like that. Um, it might be possible if you can get the Taekwon to stay somewhat close to the to a DA. If they can get Devotion while still being out of range of Nuka, it's that would be a bit too unpractical for most cases, especially when Nuka just starts teleporting around. So it takes about 20 seconds of unopposed, you know, relatively good DPS for one Taekwon to take out Kamora. So you can muscle by just having a Taekwon just focus fire on Kimura right at the start. And then you don't have to worry about Kimura. You don't have to worry about the meteors. You don't have to worry about the purple bombs because those do a lot of damage. And then after that, depends on your party composition. Um, some classes like Rune Masters are better at fighting Nuka. Um, with a with a double Taekwon and a Soul Linker, you know, Nuka is a bit trickier to take out. So it, it really depends. And, you know, there's going to be some other classes coming up like Thanatos and some of these other ones. So we, we might shift around some of our group compositions a little more. Um, and in some I've been running with, um, we've been running with Novice Guardians as novice guardians they can actually fill a tank role because they can use taunt um, there might be some other classes that can find a niche but it is um, definitely a changed instance meta because of the tyke wands uh, they can just take out some of these really annoying class uh, bosses like kamora and pakurani very easily at the start and then that just makes things much much easier so Anyway, that'll be it for this video. I might do some more follow-up videos later on because so far this has been a pretty fun instance to figure out. Um, a little bit of context though, it then took us an hour and a half to get the Isles Legend third floor cleared because that instance is horrible RNG. Yuck. This one we figured out how to control the fight at least and not have to worry about like five different instant kill things that happen AOE map clearing. <laughs> so 
Anyway, take care.